This is a video on determining the diffusion coefficient experimentally, and this is mainly how Fick did it. What he did is he had a glass bowl full of water. He also had a glass tube, and on the top of the tube he had stucco. And inside the tube he had hydrogen, so this was full of hydrogen. Now stucco is a porous material. It has basically tiny channels in it. And that allows the hydrogen to diffuse out. And hydrogen is a relatively small molecule, whereas oxygen and nitrogen are relatively large, and they don't really diffuse on through the stucco very much. So as the, diff as the hydrogen diffused through the stucco, the water, the water would rise inside the tube. So he knew that the hydrogen was diffusing out. That's how he knew, due to this height, height of the water inside the tube. But this rise... This rise is due to a change in pressure, and if you change the pressure, you change the concentration. So he wanted to keep the concentration inside the tube constant. Now he kept the concentration constant by lowering the height of the tube, so that the water inside the tube would be the same as the water outside of the tube or in the bowl. So he knew that the concentration inside the tube was constant, and the concentration outside the tube was probably zero. So outside was most likely zero, because if you had air blowing by, it would just move the hydrogen away in such a large, if he was in a large room, it would be practically zero. So he knew what the concentration gradient was. And he also knew this length. So he also knew what Z was. So he knew what the concentration was, he knew what the change in the, the change in Z was, and he also knew the area of this tube and the time. He could measure the time and the area. So he could find the number of moles that were moles that are going across the area per time. And if remember, that's flux. That is equal to flux. And he said flux was not equal to but proportional to the concentration gradient over the change in the distance. Then what he did next was add a proportionality constant, and he called it the diffusion coefficient, or d. So now we could say the flux is equal to the negative diffusion coefficient times the change in concentration times the change in the z direction. And the reason it's negative is because it's diffusing out from a high concentration to a low concentration, and he wanted the flux to be positive. That's the only reason that negative is there, and I show that I show why that is in another video. So overall, he knew what the concentration inside of the container was, he knew the concentration on the outside of the container, he knew the length, delta z, and he knew the area, and he knew the moles that were transferring across, and he was able to find what the diffusion coefficient was.